First-hand accounts from German war survivors suggest that Nazi occult secret societies in which Hitler and most of his top inner circle were involved, using the process known today as channeling, successfully called up entities who claimed to be extraterrestrials. This claim was further bolstered when the channeled entities revealed the location of a crashed spacecraft in rural Poland. When the Nazis captured this craft, they were faced with a technology completely beyond their understanding. However, the Germans, with help provided by the channeled entities, were able to grasp simple concepts of the unknown technology. This primitive understanding led to the world's first ballistic missiles, jet planes, and even the first man-made flying saucer. So, not only was Nazi Germany actively developing technology that was inspired through channeled communication, but it also learned of remote locations around the planet where it could retrieve alleged alien artifacts. The Nazi sponsored numerous expeditions to remote locations, the results of which were largely, largely unknown to Western intelligence services. A number of U.S. intelligence sources testified that Nazi Germany had indeed developed technology that resembled modern-day UFOs. According to Virgil Armstrong, a former CIA agent, we know that in the early parts of the war there were certain factions of the Allied forces that did not believe that Hitler had a secret weapon, and it wasn't until the Americans made much emphasis on this that they began to look at it seriously and indeed did discover that Hitler not only had a secret weapon, he had what we would call a UFO or spacecraft. More disturbing from the perspective of Western intelligence sources was the possibility that Nazi Germany was secretly being given assistance from an alien race. That Nazi Germany received assistance from extraterrestrials was suggested by the father of modern rocketry, Hermann Oberth, who confirmed a Nazi alien connection when he stated, We cannot take credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields alone. Alone. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, the peoples of other worlds. The likelihood that Nazi Germany had come into possession of a crashed alien craft may have been evidence of some form of assistance given to Nazi Germany by one or more alien races. At the end of the war, the superiority of Nazi Germany's technology was starkly revealed by correspondence between Major General Hugh Kinnear, Deputy Commanding General for Administration of U.S. Strategic Forces in Europe, and Lieutenant General Karl Spatz in March 1945. Kinnear wrote, Occupation of German scientific and industrial establishments has revealed the fact that we have been alarmingly backward in many fields of research. If we do not take this opportunity to seize apparatus and the brains that developed it and put this combination back to work promptly, we will remain several years behind while we attempt to cover a field already exploited. This suggests that the years Nazi Germany had in developing alien-inspired technologies while the Allied powers were skeptical of the communication techniques used by the Nazi sponsorship of occult societies were crucial. After it became known that Nazi Germany's offensive weapons capabilities were derived from its communications with alien races and likely recovery of alien technology, Britain, the United States, and even the Soviet Union were already far behind the technological discoveries made by the Nazis. The official defeat of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan in 1945 was in fact a tactical victory that masked a major strategic defeat for the victorious allies that was kept from the general public. A significant proportion of Nazi Germany's political elite and their most advanced alien technology and fully operational saucer ships had escaped from Allied occupational forces. 
What remained of Nazi Germany's advanced weapon programs was disturbing in terms of the overall technological advances achieved by the Nazis in many fields of weapons production. The fact that the Nazis had removed most of their advanced secrets, technology, and personnel during the run-up to the final defeat of Germany would have been a huge shock to Allied leaders once it became clear what had occurred. Rather than the final months of the Second World War being a last desperate gamble by a megalomaniac Nazi leadership that could not accept inevitable defeat, it was in fact a holding action for a methodically well-planned extraction of the Nazis' most valu valuable resources and personnel to well-prepared remote locations in the Antarctic and South America. This allowed the Nazis to continue their unique social system and plan to eventually play an important, if not dominant, role in global affairs. The Nazis had sufficient time and resources to prepare for such an exodus given their extensive business links, front companies, and connections with South American governments and companies. The well-equipped Nazi expeditions to the Antarctic in the pre-war period allowed the Nazis to familiarize themselves with the Antarctic terrain and lay the foundations for any post-war role to be played by these territories. During the war itself, extensive submarine activity in the region of Antarctica suggested that the Nazis could have been building bases. After Germany's unconditional surrender on May 8, 1945, Nazi submarine activity in the Antarctic region continued as evidenced by a report from the French press agency on September 25, 1946. The report stated that continuous rumors about German U-boat activity between the southernmost tip of Latin America and the continent of Antarctica are based on true happenings. What compounded this realization of a Nazi elite exodus to Antarctica was evidence that Alien races were indeed visiting the Earth. The alien presence would now be a factor in the Allies pursuing and destroying the remnants of Nazi Germany that had relocated to Antarctica and South America, and who were now using their fully operational saucer ships to move around the planet and possibly even fly into deep space. Many of the UFOs witnessed in the most immediate post-war era were fully operational Nazi spacecraft. A little-known effort to once and for all end the Nazi threat occurred with a naval military expedition led by Admiral Richard Byrd to the Antarctic in 1946 and 47. Byrd's military expedition was named Operation High Jump. The Antarctic summer of 1946 and 47 was the first opportunity to mount such a large military expedition to the frigid regions of Antarctica. Coming so soon after the end of the Second World War, it was a puzzle why such a large armada would travel to Antarctica at a time of increasing Cold War tensions and decommissioning of naval personnel, unless the expedition was sent to militarily deal with some of the unresolved issues from the war itself, remnants of the Nazi elite hidden in an underground base or base. The Bird mission was scheduled to last up to six months, but it ended in a mere eight weeks because it had, according to Chilean press reports, run into trouble and that there had been many fatalities. If the true goal of the mission was to locate and eradicate any Nazi bases, the press reports and early end to the mission indicated dismal failure and a rude